Hey guys, Katie here. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel and we're doing more end of the year content. So today we're going to be doing the final unhaul of 2020. Now most of these books I do not still have in my possession because I get rid of them immediately after reading them most of the time unless I'm trying to sell them on eBay. So a lot of them I've already taken to the little free libraries I have around my neighborhood or donated them. Um, but I do have a couple that are still sitting on my eBay which will be linked down below. And then I have a couple more that I pulled off of my TBR shelf that I decided I'm just not excited about anymore. And then a couple that I actually pulled off of my bookshelf that I was like, you know what, these are good, but I don't need to keep them. So anyway, before we do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open what I am presuming to be book mail. Um, it looks book shaped. It's very light though. So unless this is a paperback, I don't know, but I didn't order this. So if I did, I was drunk and I don't remember. But anyway, let's open it. That's a book. It's hardback. Wow. Send a thank you note. Oh! Oh! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I was not anticipating that at all! Oh my god! Oh god! Okay. Oh my god! Under the dust jacket little moment. Who has done this? Merry Christmas. I am so glad I discovered your booktube. Your videos make my day. Angela's bookshelf. Bookstagram from Angela Stout. Oh my god, Angela, thank you so much. This is so amazing. Okay, I'm gonna have her um, Instagram on the screen and you can go follow her. Oh my god, Angela, that's so cool. This is like the most exciting thing I've ever gotten in the mail. I don't know. Like, <laughs> Okay, I need to shut up. Now let's move into the books that I'm unhauling for this video, the first of which being The Death of Miss Westway by Ruth Ware. I already sold this on eBay. Um, I put it up like two months ago, I think. So this is something where I've read a lot of Ruth Ware books and they're okay, but they don't really jive with me. Like they're not my favorite and they never end up being something that I give like four stars. Like I think The Turn of the Key was four stars, um, but everything else has been a three. And I heard from Noelle Gallagher and two other booktubers, I believe, that they said that The Death of Miss Westaway was their favorite of her books. But I went ahead and got rid of it because I'm just planning on reading the audiobook, which I am in fact listening to right now. I'm only 20% into the book and I'm sure in my December wrap up, I'll let you know more about that. A book I read and got rid of was Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson. And if you want to hear my thoughts, you can watch my 10 worst books of 2020 video. Let's move on. Speaking of Peter Swanson, her every fear. After reading Eight Perfect Murders, I was like, does this guy suck? Like, I really liked The Kind Worth Killing, but I'm gonna have to reread it next year because was I wrong? Like, her, <laughs> Eight Perfect Murders was so bad that I literally was just looking at her every fear and was like, you have to be trash. Like, you have to be. Either way, doesn't matter. Got rid of it. Another book I read, but I ended up giving to the free library is Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. I accidentally dropped this book in the toilet. Do you think I'm joking? I'm not. I wouldn't, I, you know, I would joke about that, but I wouldn't wish that upon myself. Um, I didn't even really like this book. I think I gave it like a two out of five because it's about the world fair, but then it's also about H.H. H. Holmes and H.H. H. Holmes is what I wanted to hear about because that's like the, one of the most insanely interesting stories I've ever heard. But most of the book really is around the world fair, which is like, it's interesting, but it's not something I give any shits about. But uh, the part that was fascinating is um, H. H. Holmes is the guy who built the murder castle. And there's a season of American Horror Story that's completely based around him. But basically, he built this like, he was a, a, a compulsive, manipulative liar. It's like amazing how much stuff he got away with. But he had a bunch of contractors and stuff build this hotel, like a bed and breakfasty kind of thing. But then he kept firing the builders and hiring new people and having them build like secret passages. But then halfway through building it would like fire them or um, whatever so that nobody actually knew the full layout of the building except him. And what he would do is like whenever people were sleeping in their beds and stuff, he would like sneak through these secret passages and kill people or like trap them in these buildings and stuff and it is absolutely insane like he was a serial killer and like nobody knew it for the longest time it's insane he murdered so many people it was just so cool but the book is only like eight percent of it is about him and the rest of it is just about construction and i did not care so anyway got rid of that 
A Good Marriage by Kimberly McRae. I read this. It was good. It was good. I gave it three out of five because it was just a little boring in my opinion. Like it was too long. There were things about it that were good. I would not detract someone from reading it, but I would say that if there was something that sparked your interest more, skip this and go to that because it's good, but it's not great. And it's not even that good. A book I really did enjoy is The Night Swim by Megan Golden. I really enjoyed this and the cover is absolutely stunning, but I'm not going to reread it. And if I do reread it, I'm just going to listen to the audio. Um, it is a book with a podcast element in it. And I do highly suggest the audiobook for this. I read it in one day. It was so fun. It was fast. It wasn't fantastic. Like it wasn't as good as Sadie in my opinion, but it was really good. I think I gave this like 3.5 or 4 stars out of 5, but um, one, I don't need the physical book even though it's so pretty, and two, it wasn't like 5 stars. Like it was good, but it wasn't great. Moving on. A Stranger in the House by Sherry Lapina. This might be the most boring book I read this entire year. I'm not kidding you. It was so boring. Now, that is crazy because a couple next, The Couple Next Door by Sherry Lapina is one of the, my favorite, like, fun, fast, flashy uh, mysteries I've ever read. But, whew, this book was so boring. And I'm so mad at myself that I didn't DNF it. Um, it's an interesting plot. It's following, like, it's very, very, very closely following um, the, at least, beginning of the Madeline McCann story. And if you haven't seen that, it's very good documentary on Netflix. This is why I gave it two out of five is because it's not that it's a bad book. It was just so boring. Like it wasn't enough. There was nothing like gripping. There was nothing like happening. Anyway, Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. It's not that this book is bad. Um, I gave it a three out of five. I think that it is incredibly slow. It is not necessarily like, it's not a, like a horror or a thriller until like the last like three chapters. And let me tell you, the last three chapters are amazing. Amazing. Oh my God. Oh my God. The very ending of this book is what the entire movie is about. Like if you've seen the movie, the entire movie is about the very ending of this book. And it's so good. The rest of it is a giant allegory on um, grief and depression. And it is very well done. Here's the thing. Very well done. Oh my God. Like Stephen King really did that. He really like got into people's minds and their emotions. And it is very well written and it's very good but I was not excited by it I was just like oh my god this is like taking a while um and it's not that he does the whole like purple prose or whatever like that he does in all his other books like it's not like that it's just that there's no action happening so it took me a second and that was not what I was anticipating so I ended up listening to the audio which is narrated by Michael C. Hall I do recommend it um and it was okay Violent Ends by a myriad of authors. It's like told from 16 different authors and it's about 16 kids in um, high school who go through a school shooting. I thought that this would be very, very entertaining and it does have good um, reviews on Goodreads, but I wasn't excited about it anymore. It sat on my um, TBR shelf for like six months or at least five months and I just never picked it up and there was always something else I wanted to read. So I just went ahead and got rid of it. Final Girls by Riley Sager. I think I gave this like a 1.5 because the concept is interesting. It's about like final girls, like the last girl who will survive like a mass um, murder, like a mass attack. But here's the thing. All the characters are so insufferable. They're so annoying. Like the main girl character, the only reason that she has survived this long in life is because she is dumb, ditzy, rich, blonde, pretty. I don't understand where she, like she's like a Lululemon freaking blonde ponytail idiot. And I just hated her. And she was just stupid. Like she was, I'm sorry. She was dumb. Um, and then the ending, the ending, <laughs> what like that's what happened that's the bad guy hated it similarly the last time i lied by rayleigh sager this one um is also on my worst books of 2020 this was a one star um this was like one of the most boring books i've ever ever read in my entire life uh i read it last month and i cannot tell you who the bad guy was i can i'm dead ass i cannot remember who the bad guy was i cannot remember even what happens in the end because it was so boring it was so freaking boring i already got rid of the book both of them are, i've already sold on my ebay um this is a book about a girl who goes she was in a camp when she was younger and one day she wakes up and all the girls in her cabin disappear into the woods and they never come back. Okay. And then when she's older, she decides to become a camp counselor at the same camp. Why? 
<laughs> beats me. Seems like a really dumb idea, but whatever. Um, and then I guess some other stuff happens and I guess you find out what happened then and what happened now. Um, can't tell you because it like the information like yeeted out of my brain because I didn't like the book so much. The Dark Vault by V.E. Schwab. Now, I feel bad about this. This is, in my opinion, like a pretty sought after edition of this book. It's The Dark Vault. Um, it is a bind up of The Archived and The Unbound. I read The Archived and then I did not move on to The Unbound. I thought The Archived was good. I gave it three out of five stars, um, but it didn't make me really want to push to read the second book. And there is also, this supposed to be a trilogy, there is no ending in sight. This series came out a very long time ago and nobody has bought um, the rights to the book and nobody has bought the right to the third book and I realized I was like well I need to read them just in case when the third book comes out but if the third book comes out they're going to rebrand like they're going to reprint the first two books and it's really hard to find the first two books in like hardback or paperback like to match um so I was like if the third book comes out I will rebuy the two books separately and they'll probably have an um a cover change so I'll just buy it then it's not good enough that I feel like I want to read two books out of a trilogy that's never gonna happen. And then I have Angela's Ashes by Frank McCourt and also Teacher Man by Frank McCourt. These were given to me by a coworker who said that um, Angela's Ashes is his favorite book of all time. Another coworker also said that it's a very good book. Um, I know that I've heard that they are, but I have no interest in reading these. This is not the kind of genre that I'm interested in reading. And if I was gonna read it, I definitely would not read it physically. Like this just seems, not only incredibly boring but like sad and depressing i you know it just just i don't want to and i also don't even know what these books are about eliza and her monsters by francesca zappia this is a very good book it is a booktube darling for a reason there are a lot of um mixed media in this book this is good okay um but it wasn't as good as fangirl in my opinion like i do really like this but I had also I reread um Radio Silence and Fangirl this year and I read this and both of those books are superior to this in my opinion this is good it just wasn't like good enough that I'm gonna reread it so I'm passing it on Two books that I actually pulled off of my bookshelf are Invisible Monsters, the remix, and also Fight Club, both by Chuck Palahniuk. Now, both of these books are very good. Um, I gave uh, Invisible Monsters four stars and I gave Fight Club five stars. So this was on my favorite of all time shelf until just a couple days ago when I took it off because I realized that um, Chuck Palahniuk is an incredible author. He is an author that has a writing style completely unto his uh, unto himself. Um, nobody else writes like him. But the thing is, his writing style is incredibly difficult to swallow. Like, oh my god, it takes so long to finish these books, and they're not that long. They're really not. You should be able to blow through it, but you can't, or at least I can't. It's just it's so difficult. And I also own Fight Club on audio, so I can always re-listen to it that way. It is my favorite movie. Um, I think that like the plot twists and stuff in these books are phenomenal. And I don't want to get rid of them, especially because they're like some of the most quotable books ever. Um, but I just, I'm not going to reread it. I forgot to mention Haunted by Chuck Palahniuk. Uh, this is the same way. I did not finish this. I think I got like this far through. I wanted to read this so bad. Like one, this cover is absolutely stunning. I'm obsessed. I bought this full price at Barnes and Nobles and I was like so annoyed when I got like freaking 30 pages in and was like, I don't like this. Uh, this is supposed to make people throw up in their mouths. I read that chapter and was like, that's it. I'm sorry. That's so, that makes me sound so disgusting. I'm like, and? Because it's just like not the kind of horror that I find horrifying. You know, I don't really get it. I'm sure this book is good, but is it? Um, I'm not going to find out. Girl Made of Stars by Ashley Herring Blake. This was very good. I gave this four out of five. Um, the topics that are addressed in this book are phenomenal and I have never ever seen these topics discussed in such an in-depth and beautiful way. Uh, but the writing is very immature and the characters can be incredibly middle grade at times, which is very frustrating. And I wanted to eat this book out of the window for how many times they mention Harry Potter. I was like, I get it. Mentioning Harry Potter. It's a reference. It's pop culture reference like gold, but like good God. Can you mention it in a more sophisticated way? Because it was just the character being like, she's wearing like a, a Gryffindor tie or she's knitting a like Ravenclaw scarf. I'm like, is that supposed to give me character descriptions? Because it's not. It's weird. It's like a very mature topic and that topic is done well, but then everything else the characters do 
is very immature. But then also like the main character is um, gay and the relationship that she has with this other girl is so good and I really loved it. I just wish that this this same story had been told by Ashley Herring Blake like maybe years in the future when maybe she wasn't writing that same way or maybe this story was told by a different author. <sighs> anyway, In the House in the Dark of the Woods by Layard Hunt. I have to read it every time because I always get confused. This book is incredibly small, like so small, and it's also blurbed by Mona Awad, which makes me want to keep it. Oh my god. Okay, um, this book is so tiny. It is supposed to be like, like a weird like Grimm's fairy tale kind of thing. I put it on my shelf because it's small and I was like, oh, well, I can read this for like a reading rush or something. But then I was like, yeah, but I'm not like interested. I don't know. Now I'm kind of trying to talk myself into keeping this because the cover is stunning. I shouldn't do it. I should get rid of it. I should get rid of it. I don't know. Please comment. I'm going to put this to the side. Tell me if this is good. Like, I really want to know. Like, let me know in the comments. I will not get rid of it until I get, like, at least, like, five comments saying whether or not I should or shouldn't because I just don't know. Another one off the TBR shelf is We Sold Our Souls by Grady Hendrix. Um, I really like the look of this book. Uh, the hardcover is even better, but I really love Grady Hendrix's, like, cover style. But this book, after I read the synopsis, just did not sound interesting at all. I did do an unboxing of this where I read the synopsis, but, um, I thought this was going to be paranormal. I thought they, they were literally going to be, like, selling their soul to the devil to be musicians, but that's not what it's about. It's just about, like, how being a musician is hard and, like, the dark drug-addled life. Of being a musician and I'm like okay listen I'll just listen to Daisy Jones and the Six you know what I'm saying <laughs> um I really 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 love the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires that was one of my favorite books I read in 2020 but I just am not interested in this anymore and Jan if you're out there she bought this book because of me I'm so sorry but if you've read it and it's amazing let me know I'll keep it and read it but if not it's going away Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett I'm very sorry to see this book go this is like one of my favorite covers I'm literally obsessed and then the pages on the inside are stunning like I really love it and I don't want to let it go but I don't know about this book and I do think that if I'm going to read it I'm just going to listen to the audio I really want to watch the tv show I actually was trying to read this this year and I got to page 160 and then I just put it down I get this is another book where I'm like let me know I don't know I know a lot of people love it but like I just wasn't in the mood I don't know uh, I don't know you tell me please and the last book on the list, which I have read, is The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. I should have been new after I read The Night Circus that Aaron Morgenstern and I just are not going to get along. Um, this is like the most stunning book I have ever seen in the history of the world. The concept is good. Um, it is just so drawn out and it is just very purple prose. It's just poetic writing. Like the writing style is phenomenal, but there's way too many metaphors. Like literally every other chapter is a story that's just like a metaphor. Like, oh, um, a pirate falls in love with a princess. And I'm like, okay. And then like the pirate's supposed to be like also the same guy from one of the other metaphors where he's like a freaking toad or something. I don't know. I just... I liked it. I think I gave it three out of five. I liked it, but I was also really mad. I was very mad because the book was just so convoluted and I'm absolutely not keeping it. So here is all the books that I'm going to be unhauling in our last unhaul of 2020. Um, of course, there are a bunch of books that I've already gotten rid of, but I want to thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you had a great time. If you want to um, follow me on Instagram or Goodreads, they're going to be linked down below. Please let me know what you think about these books, if I should just desperately be ho keeping hold of one of them. And anyway, I will see you in another video coming soon. Bye.